Well, here we are with chapter three of this particular edition of the Sousier Chronicles with this dancer's kilt. I've, in a, from our last video, I'd again opened up the inner apron seam <clears throat> and the end. I haven't pressed it flat yet because I spent a couple of hours staring at this last night until I finally decided it's time to stop and go have a beer. Um, but I've pinned up the last pleat so it's correctly oriented with the the set underneath. Now remember, I had intended, I thought, let's see if I can do this, of, of making this kilt a little bit more orthodox, shall we say, in that bringing the central feature of the pleats centered on the blue stripe by undoing, robbing a couple of pleats from the from the left hip, from the, from the right-hand side here, um, and then wondering, hang on, the central feature of the apron is the white stripe. Can I move this to the white stripe? Couldn't do that, but then it occurred to me, duh, that I, with this extra cloth, I can just make the blue stripe the new central feature of the front apron. All good to go, sounds right. So I did the two seams. I haven't pressed them flat, as I said yet. Yeah, did a trial sort of pin up to see if I would have enough cloth, and I do, because with this and um, measuring the kilt, and remember when we're measuring for the female figure, we're not measuring at the buckle and strap line as we do for the male, we measure at the top because of the difference in their pelvic structure. So measuring here, I get, what, 15 and a half inches, which would give me a 21 and a half inch front apron, which is, to my mind, as a, as a military kilt maker, is perfect, right? And there's enough cloth to do that, which again would cr create a nice deep apron pleat and a nice deep or a relatively deep fold on the outside. But then when I look underneath, it's just simply not going to work because the the fish that's been cut out is so very wide that the only way I could support this would be to have a very, very wide piece of canvas. And so I, that's not going to happen. So back to the drawing board. I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to be able to center that now. So my next step is I'm going to unpin this, restore one of the, the next pleats. And they were both white pleats, as I recall, at least it was, I think, white and then centered on the, on the white stripe. But I'm going to restore one of those pleats, pin it up again and see what the underside looks like. And if, and if need be, I might wind up having to restore those two pleats. Now, um, once I've done that and made my decision on that, it's only then that I'm going to pin up and then sew the inner apron. Because, of course, with the, with the, re, with the reintroduction of one or two of these pleats, we are, change, of course, changing this back measurement, which, of course, affects the, um, the inside apron. And, in, and again, with my, my recent practice, I'm going to make this inside apron a bit wider than the front apron um, for the reasons that I mentioned in that previous video. So I'm going to stop it here and get back to work. Incidentally, I'm, I'm shooting this one-handed because I, I can't be um, dragging my my videographer away from whatever he's doing at the drop of a hat. But I will later on, after I've done a bunch of these short segments, I'll ask him to stitch them together for me. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. Cheers. So here we are, a little while later. Um, I've pinned up one of the two pleats that I'd robbed out from the from the left hip and then um, temporarily measured from that same center uh, the blue line measured the new apron width because um, from the 37 waist I've now got 16 and a half inches here so 20 and a half inches here so when I lay that out based on the center line the right hand edge comes to about where this crease is and I've got my optimum width for the fold a hand's breadth which is which is great and as importantly perhaps more importantly in doing this one-handed again is that when I flip this over pardon me will I be clumsy with one hand there we are. As I flip this over, and you can see I've, I've pinned it flat, that we have an acceptable apron pleat here. 
right? It's, it's a little less than a, a quarter, but it's frankly, it's the best we're going to get, but it's better than it was. And as you can see, I've pinned everything flat here. Now we have the fish that's been cut out, but now more importantly, the canvas can go under this piece and also this piece pinned here, and it can go right up, almost up to the, to the buttonhole. And then all of this can be stabilized with herringbone stitches to the canvas and with a protective layer uh, when I sew it in between so that the stitches aren't visible on the outside apron. So yeah, um, yeah, we'll stabilize all of, yeah, this, this is going to work. My only remaining concern is the buttonhole because we don't have much of a seam allowance here at all. Um, I not sure what I'm going to do yet. It might well be that that piece won't be a contrasting color. It remains to be seen if perhaps, because I, I haven't measured the inside apron yet, perhaps if I can rob even two inches off the end of the inside apron, that would give me material not only to redo the, the buckle tabs, but also to graft a piece in for the buttonhole, in, as you've seen with my previous kilt. So we'll see how that all goes. Yeah, I think, though, that... As soon as, I think I'll, uh, from this, um, I'm going to put in, I'm going to shape the inside apron. I'm going to put in the main canvas from the buttonhole to the end of the inside apron. And then I think perhaps, I may not even baste in, temporarily baste in the front canvas. I think at that point, I'll call the client by for a trial fitting. Because again, the vast majority of my work is done for male clients. And of course, the, the female figure is just different enough to make it interesting at a number of levels. <laughs> um, but in any case, yeah, before, because originally I'd intended to shorten this kilt, you know, take a couple of inches off the top, reduce the height. But I want to make sure that's actually still the best plan. So I'm going to have her come in, we'll trial fit it, and I'll ask what she thinks about the height of the kilt relative to the torso as far as comfort and, and appearance and everything else. So there we go. Um, not sure when I'll turn, turn it, mm. tune in next, but if there's anything relevant to report, uh, and again, of course, at the end of it, I'll do a summary of work. There we go. Back to work, McDonald. Here's one more quick thing. I've just um, laid out and pinned up the inside apron. Um, I'm taking it because there wasn't enough, there's not enough cloth and I don't want to start robbing from this side. So the best I can do is I'm making it a, I'm not, not a full inch longer, only a half inch longer than the outside apron. But that should be sufficient, but that's taking it down. So it's going to be a very narrow rolled edge, but it's the inside apron. So it doesn't matter really. On the, the inside, the apron pleat isn't, it's what, maybe three inches there, two and a half inches at the waist, um, maybe broadening a bit towards the, the seat and then down to the hem. Um, not ideal, but better than it was. And frankly, the best we can do. Okay, so it's only now that I've pinned up and I've basically beta tested my, my ideas. So it's now that I'll, I'll take this over to the pressing table and I'll iron out all of the previous creases in the aprons and frankly, I'll have to set it aside while it dries. This this light cloth might well dry faster than the heavier cloth, but having pressed it, I'm going to set it aside until it dries, and then I'll carry on from there. So I'll uh, I'll report in later.